Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. Our rare, of course, not a not a good one. I've got some reasonable uncommons. Destiny Spinner, definitely the standout one, given that Birth doesn't always fit into the more aggressive white decks. And then at common, the uh, Mars Grasp stands out. So it's basically Spinner versus Mars Grasp. Probably still the Mars Grasp here. And yeah, I'll take another one. Apathy, I think, is slightly better. I mean, it's definitely close between the two. They're both great. But uh, when we already have a Mars Grasp, I don't see a reason to pick a second color. And so yeah, Acolyte of Affliction looks good. Could also take a Blight Breath to potentially stay mono black. But it's not like the Mars Grasp is super synergistic with the Blight Breath. So I'll take an Acolyte. Which is also very good with Mars Grasp, since it's a permanent we can get back from the graveyard as well. Ooh, alright, so this is a, a tricky pick. Big fan of the Chimera. Illyrius is also very good. Given that we already have an Acolyte, it's probably just Chimera. Charger can also be fine in the more aggressive uh, decks, but in the Black Green Escape deck, I'm a bigger fan of Chimera, since it can also play defense if needed. A lot of green cards still in the pack. Haven, Pursuit, Grove Dancer, Return to Nature are all very playable cards that I wouldn't mind having access to. Pursuit, maybe not the best when we already have two Mars Grasps. It's not the best with uh, removals. So we've got Haven for a bit of ramp, Return to Nature as a salt removal spell, and Grove Dancer as a, a fine two drop that can later help us fill the graveyard for escape. Yeah, I think I'll grab a Haven. Training and Arachner are both excellent. Don't have a ton of escape creatures yet. So I think we pick up an Arachner here. Wings, perfect uh, spot to pick it up since there's nothing else. Alright, not an Arachner, I guess. And there's a small chance we play enemy. So we're pretty committed to black green. Ooh, nice Grove Dancer wield. More Myers Grasps. There's Hierophant. Another Chimera. Don't think I'm really interested in the Storm's Wrath at this point. Hierophant is quite good at filling the graveyard for escape. But even though we already have two Myers Grasps. We might not get another one, and removal's removal. So I think it's close, but I'm probably still taking the removal spell. The creatures in the set are also relatively small, so minus three can deal with even some pretty expensive creatures. Soul Reaper looks good. Don't mind having a sacrifice uh, effect or sacrifice uh, outlet in escape decks. And can maybe get the uh, aspect of Lamprey or Grove Dancer on the wheel. Ooh, what a pack. Timurat, Triton, Final Death. Would love all of those. So this is where we have to look at kind of our curve, what we already have. So I've got some good removal. This is close. Timurat can seriously mess with the opponent's graveyard which can be very important in the set. Don't have any Black Devotion synergies, don't have any Constellation synergies yet. And it is somewhat difficult to cast a double black. So I think it's probably between Triton and Final Death. Final Death is more removal, which is never bad. Triton gives us a good early play that can trade off for any ground creature. And Helps fill the graveyard a little bit for escape. We've got double Arachnir, Chimera that escape. Probably still final death. 
And then we're pretty set on removal. Perfect. Get our Minor Triton now over Hydra's Growth and Soul Reaper. Nice. Wow. That's a very late Elspeth's Nightmare. Fifth pick. This card can absolutely wreck some uh, starts from the opponent. Mogus's Favor would have also been a nice pickup here, but... Also, I'm very happy to see Underworld Breach, fifth pick. This card is pretty much unplayable, so it's not surprising to see it late. But uh, it does mean that the bots don't necessarily rare draft as much as they may be used to in some other sets. So it's a good sign that the bots at least are a little bit more lenient with passing rares now. And... Uh, yeah, I might play an Underworld Charger if we don't have more escape creatures. Nexus Wardens has a couple enchantments to go with it. So I guess that could also be okay with Triple Myers Grasp. Can gain quite a bit of life, good defensive creature. Chargers definitely more into being aggressive. So actually, Wardens might be the pick. Don't think we want to splash Siona, even though if we have Triple Myers Grasp, it would be good there. But uh, I don't really want to add a third color. Mogus's favor over Piper. Nothing here really. So how does our deck win the game? Definitely need more escape creatures. I guess the Arachnirs can maybe get there. So that's definitely still something we need to figure out. I guess the wings also helps if we don't mill it. Wow, Anax wields and blessing. So no one's drafting rats, I guess, but not gonna jump into red now. Yeah, I guess red was the the most open color here, but uh, I think our deck is still fine. Maybe black-red was kind of the sweet spot. Didn't see a ton of green after taking those early Arachnirs. And yeah, Tectonic Giant too. Could have had a Storm's Wrath as well, but yeah, still pretty happy with uh, our deck here. So I guess we're looking at a Blight Breath. Eutropia on the splash doesn't seem great. Although it is an option. Eutropia definitely a more powerful card that I'm willing to splash as opposed to Siona that we saw earlier. But we don't have any fixing, so we would have to pick up some in this pack. Either amulets or caryatids or omens. This is our green. If we were to add reds. We would have something along these lines. I guess Aspect could be playable too with Double Rage Hounds. So, I mean... Could still end up with a playable deck if we go Reds. In which case, uh, passing up on that Inex kind of hurts. But then again, like a Blind Breath is not a super exciting pick, so it's probably fine to speculate on Tectonic Giants. I mean, Blind Breath is fine, but we just don't have much Devotion. Like, we'll have two, maybe three Devotion if we play the Blind Breath. So, I guess we'll take the Giants. I doubt we'll end up Black Red, but just in case, I guess it doesn't hurt to pick it. Since we're not passing up on much. I mean, I guess I could go Black Red Splash Green if we somehow get some fixing. But Clothus is a bit of a nombo with Escape too sometimes. And then Splash, Acolyte, and Clothus. The Wings and the Manticore kind of support the Rage Hounds well. And the Triple Mars Grass means we can clear a path for these to keep attacking. But if we're going to be an aggressive red-black deck, adding a third color also makes the deck a lot more inconsistent. I guess we have an Altar as well for fixing, but... And Infuriate. Yeah, this is tricky. What's the best uh, black or green cards? Probably just a Warbriar Blessing. 
So we can take a Blessing, which is a pick for our black-green deck, or we can take a Clothus, which is a somewhat speculative pick for a black-red splash-green deck, or black-green splash-red, but it's the only red card we would be splashing, and it's sometimes a anti-synergy with escape. Fine. I do this for your entertainment. And then now... There's not much. Aspect of Lamprey, I guess. Could take a Chariot, which we can always play regardless of colors. I guess Chariot is kind of a combo with uh, Ragehound too. I didn't realize that yet. If the Ragehound would have a bad attack, we can just crew the Chariot and tap it. So that's kind of a neat synergy too. Yeah, why not? And then... Do we have any ways of targeting here of the games? If we were green, it would be an easy blessing. Libation can always be the pick. But uh, we probably need some more creatures for our red-black deck. And yeah, we've got a couple ways of potentially targeting the hero, so it seems fine. Libation's never terrible, I agree. But our creature counts in uh, black-red is pretty low. So these are our two splash cards, if we pick up some fixing. So we've got four two drops, a three drop, a four drop, or I guess a couple four drops, and then a six drop, so creature counts uh, leaves much to be desired. So I think I probably just need a hero. Alright, Arrows' Blessing plays quite well with Hero of the Games too. Would love Oracle, another hero. There's another Acolyte. Karyotids would have been... I mean, we would have taken Acolyte easily if we were black-green. And I guess I'm down for Cyclops. We might be aggressive enough for it. This one's usually pretty mediocre. And we're a bit creature light to be playing all these uh, auras. Although Aspect is kind of nice with Hero of the Games too. Right, I'll take another Rage Hound. Rider could also be fine. But we seem to have a decent Rage Hound deck if we're gonna play Aspect, Blessing, all this removal, Infuriates, Mogus' Favor, and then Chariots. And a Wrap and Flames could be serviceable too. Can target our own hero. Maybe clear a path for the Rage Hounds. Alright, Wield Hero. There's also Final Flare. Final Flare plays well with enchantments we can sacrifice. So it's decent with Elspeth's Nightmare. Can be good with... Uh, Cards like Arosa's Blessing, Manticore. But we already seem to have plenty of removal. So probably just take the creature. Don't need another Wings. Might play another Thrill. Alright. And we wield the other hero too. Well, it doesn't look like we're splashing green, since we didn't get any fixing whatsoever. So I guess uh, this is kind of the direction we're headed. And Unknown Shores would have been pretty bad fixing for this deck, so I didn't really consider that one. So this is 44, can easily be a uh, 16 lander, and then we need to make a couple of cuts. A thrill can easily go. So this is 42, gonna keep all the 2 drops, all the 3 drops, don't think we can really cut any creatures. And I think I like the chariots with triple ragehound. 
enemy could go. That's definitely cuttable. And then... With triple hero, the Rampant Flames looks quite good. And uh, the Aspect as well, all the pump spells basically, so maybe just a Thrill. Yeah. And then what do we have for Flood Insurance? We've got Favor that escapes, Triple Rage Hound that escape. Can move the wings around. Don't have a ton of Flood Insurance, I guess uh, the Soul Reaper maybe. So we will need to end the game relatively quickly. Yeah, Enemy of Enlightenment is hit or miss. It, it can definitely be good and close out a game for you. But it's not always uh, not always great. Don't think we need Portent of Betrayal. If we had a couple lamp ants, maybe to sacrifice the opponent's creatures, I would be into the portents. So yeah, our game plan is play some cheap creatures, remove as many creatures from the opponent as possible to get in damage, and then we've got a couple pump spells and uh, the ramp and flames to end the game with. So it's not a very subtle deck. And then mana base. A little bit more red than black. Most of our early creatures, triple rage hounds and triple hero, are red, and then I guess all the four drops too. So the mana base is gonna a little be a little sketchy. Seven nine is not a not a great mana base. We might miss out on uh, black mana. So that's also why just adding a third color would be a little bit uh, ambitious when the mana base for two colors is already not great. Yeah, maybe I should have been paying more attention to what red cards we got late in the packs. Because it seemed like we were pretty committed to black-green from the get-go. But uh, yeah, maybe could have had some nice red cards like Anax. I don't know what I took over it at the time. And some other red cards we ended up wheeling in uh, the second pack. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this performs. Well, can't really mulligan this hand, but uh, all right, perfect. That's what we needed, a two drop. Sir Bones also aggressive. Sadly, Omen kills Rage Hound. Apathy, not bad. Cyclops can definitely deliver the beatdowns. This deck would not have minded the Underworld Charger. So, I guess we just uh, Arrows' Blessing. They do have a White Devotion card in hand, so getting rid of Hero of the Winds might be a priority here. So I think we just Blessing kill the Hero of the Winds. And then next turn we could grasp uh, two creatures. Ooh, nice. We definitely had a nice draw. And drew pretty well off the top. And Elspeth's Nightmare put in a ton of work. On the draw, 
Not an exciting hand, but probably keepable. Rampant Flames with double hero can do some damage. We've got the wings to fly over. Good if we draw Rage Hounds. Tempted to trade here, even though we're the aggressive deck. Our late game here is basically Tectonic Giant plus maybe the Wings to fly over. So we don't necessarily need to keep uh, the heroes to win the game. And we are taking a decent hits. So we'll just trade for the Soul Reaper. Alright, slam this Giant. One might be missing a color. It's not many cheap answers for Giant here. So probably just equip the wings, attack with Giant, play hero. And I'll use the card draw ability. Blessing seems nice. So we can still play that until our next turn. So for now we'll just play the hero. And probably still keep the wings on the giants. There's white mana, so the giant might get answered. E to extinction. Probably deal three damage since I'm kind of locked into playing the blessing, so we might not be able to play another card we find with the giant's ability. All right, so the giant did some damage. Temple Thief attack since it's gonna die anyway. Yeah, probably still Blessing. And then I could also Mogus' favor for extra damage. Seems fine. Uh, points at six. Although apathy deals with the hero nicely. All right. Well, now we don't have much going on. I could nightmare just to get removal spell out of their hands, but uh, I think we just play land and pass. I could even hold lands to avoid discard, since our curve's pretty low. Could also use the wings to sacrifice the hero of the games just to get access to Mogus's favor in the graveyard, but it's probably not super relevant right now. But I guess it doesn't hurt to equip. Just don't need to forget about the wings. Because uh yeah, we we don't even see the wings here. And then I'll probably play land to keep up final death. So at this point, I'm thinking their hand is just all removal. Sure. I think I'll take a draw step first. Yeah, don't really want to final death it. Could also go Rampant Flames plus Mogus's Favor to kill it. 
Because given that we have the wings, we have a way to kind of fly over. So we probably don't need this as a way to kind of get in damage. Alright, this needs a creature, but uh, I guess we'll play it. I'll take three for now. It's a good target for Nightmare. And now, let's see. 7, 8, so we can do both. Maybe I should have final death in my turn to play around Karamatra's Blessing. I could take four and then check with the Nightmare before we final death. Maybe that's the play. Getting something back from the graveyard. Rise to glory. Okay. They just wanted to uh, get value before the discard happens. Huh. Did they accidentally click on it and now they're forced to enchant? <laughs> well, uh, that's an oops right there. Check their hand before using a removal and their hand's just more removal as expected. I guess the final death, since that can tag the chariot whereas Apathy can't. And then I get to hit for three. And then I can solo crew the chariots, even though they put empathy on the warden. So it's kind of the perfect threat here. Alright, I guess that works. Although, never mind, I can just crew and upkeep. Probably need to be full control for this to work. Alright, sweet. Well, this was a, a strange game, to say the least. Yeah, we made the chariot look good in that game, dodging uh, enchantment-based removal. I don't know what I'm doing here, but it's gonna be fun. Nice opening hand. So what do we lead with? Probably a Rage Hound still. And 
And I don't want to play Minor Triton when they're about to exile some cards from my graveyard. And yeah, Chariot's also good with the Rage Hounds. Siona misses. Would they trade here? I mean, I don't really want to risk it and have them make a 1-1 token. So probably Nightmare. And then they can choose what creature to get back. They might get back the 3-4 since it lines up well against my Rage Hound. And the sooner we play Nightmare, usually the better. Because the opponent's more likely to have a card stuck in hand that uh, we can make them discard. Gets back the 3-4, as expected. And they get back the enchantments. Alright, got a bit of value at least. But they've got a lot of good blockers for my Rage Hounds here, so... Chariot is on her Rage Hound tapping duty. Alright, now we need a removal spell to get rid of a, a blocker here to start getting in some attacks. Well, there go two Myers Grasps. Still attacking, that's aggressive. Did they draw a creature, I guess? Sure, that one's not too bad. Pretty good too. So I could kill the Grove Dancer and attack for, let's see, 11. It's a lot of damage. I guess they gain two from the Binding. Although, never mind, there's no creatures in the graveyard. I guess one if I kill the Grove Dancer here. I guess we can crew the, the Chariot multiple times too, so I guess that's fine. Yeah, we can tap down multiple Rage Hounds with the same chariot, so... This seems fine. And then any reason to keep land in hand? I think we cut the thrill possibility in the final build. Yeah, I'm really excited about the chariot combo with Ragehound. It's not something I thought of before, but it seems pretty obvious now. Serpent's forced to stay back. So what would they block? They would block chariots and hero. I'll leave the hounds unblocked, and then I won't have the chariot anymore to tap down the rage hounds in the future. Yeah, that's gonna get pretty ugly if we don't top deck removal. So I think we just chill. So drawing the wings here would be our best draw, I think. Hmm, <laughs> nice. Hmm. 
Uh, do I move the wings? Doesn't matter. Probably not. Alright, let's uh, do the same. Don't think we have lethal. Yeah, don't quite have enough to kill them. Also, the Mace Warden plus the wings is also quite scary. Could move to the Warden, I guess. Although now I guess they could plummet my Warden if they top deck it. I don't know, probably doesn't matter. The key to drafting these Ragehound decks, in my opinion, is just having a good way to manage your Ragehounds once the opponent finds a good blocker for it. And as we discovered today, Chariot is a good way to do it. Of course, pump spells, sacrifice effects, the removal to clear a path, those are all valid methods. You need good anger management if you want to play a Ragehound deck. It only takes a mountain to really uh, enable this. Hmm, on the draw I would keep this, on the play... I think the sand is enough powerful if I do draw mountain that I'm willing to take the risk. Alright, they get to see my greedy keep. Another hero. I guess we'll grasp the uh, Triton. Alright, so the Rage Hound just traded one for one. And we're still in this game. Although not the ideal start. A lot of options here. I might not need to Blessing the Marauder since we can just attack into it with the Hero of the Games, so maybe I just play Cyclops here and set up for next turn. Now they do have 6 mana up, so they probably have like a final death in hand that they want to use in response to my blessing, so we're not going to play into that. And instead, I guess just play another hero. Alright, Nightmare Shepherd. Well, that has to go. Now they have three mana up, what can they have? They can have Drag to the Underworld, they can have the Counterspell for Enchantments, they could have Mantle. Basically there's no way this ends well for me, but at least if it's the Counterspell we get it out of their hands. I think I wait a turn. 
Let's play Soul Reaper. Yeah, they definitely have a response. And then uh, we'll see. If we keep adding to the board, eventually they'll have to maybe tap out. At least now if I play Arosa's Blessing, if the thing they're holding is a removal spell, I can still sacrifice my hero in response and it's not as bad. So that's also reason to wait and now we have enough mana to do both. I don't have enough cards in Graveyard to escape the Rage Hound, sadly. But after this play, we probably will. And get the trigger regardless. Was it drag? Yep, it was drag. Alright. So whatever I attack with here, they block with Marauder basically, but if I attack with both we get in for a bit of damage, which might be worth it. That makes this attack a lot less uh, appealing. They took it, okay, that's surprising. Cling to dust, get rid of a rage hound. Well, now the chariot can attack. Take five. That's a good creature. Not a final death, all right. Well, this Infuriate might be able to make the difference here. Charger doesn't block. So what happens if I attack with both? Deal three to them, they're at four. They put Shepard in front of Giants. Then they're dead to Infuriate on Soul Reaper. And if they chump Soul Reaper, I guess that's fine. Yeah. Opponent escaping their card draw. Leaves uh, the creatures in the graveyards. Alright, looks like we got there. Yeah, that was a very close game. Lots of back and forth. The Tectonic Giant steals the show. Should be relatively functional with any lands. Of course, a swamp is preferred. Yeah, I'll try it.
that's too bad. Line is good though. Bone takes it. Alright. So we don't get to use our mana efficiently, sadly. Bone and mills themselves. Pursuits, so lots of graveyard filling. Finds the flyer. Alright, nice. So we get to add a warden to the board. And next turn we'll have two options, or I guess three options even. For how to deal with the board. Yeah, they could definitely be building around Uro with uh, so much self mill. That's fine. Chariot for anger management. But, uh, can just attack an aspect, or we can blessing the wave rider, but then they get to trade with the mystic. So attacking with both seems better. They also don't get to mill, because it didn't deal any damage because it died in first strike. Now it doesn't keep first strike, so next turn they can trade for Wave Rider, but then we might Mars Grasp instead. That puts it just out of range. Horn Beetle picks up a counter. I guess this is not too bad. Infuriate too. Oh man, we could have a pretty nice turn here. Could grasp the beetle. Attack with both. They're pretty much forced to trade for Rage Hounds. But then Infuriate doesn't quite kill them. But then, if they do have removal for the Warden, we don't have a ton of action. If they just escape Chimera, they're dead to the Grasp. The removal I was afraid of is like something that turns Warden into a fish. Because then it wouldn't go to the graveyards and I wouldn't have enough to escape Rage Hounds. Oops, I forgot to uh, pump, but I guess my opponent conceded before they were actually dead. Yeah, nice hands. We've got our wings for anger management, a couple removal spells, hopefully draw more creatures. Physician's kind of annoying. Probably want to favor that before we play the Rage Hound. Otherwise I'm forced to wings, and if I don't draw a land, that doesn't work. So being on the draw here would have worked out a little bit better. Zero point on mono black. So I could just go Wings, Equip, but I also don't mind just killing the Triton since it's going to be a problem later when we play Cyclops. And that way we don't take any damage on the way back. 
if they omen of the dead back the grim physician with the idea that uh, it's more likely to trade off a rage hound then the wings becomes a lot more interesting Right, physician, so now the wings looks good. A liar. Alright. It's definitely going to be annoying. But if they get greedy, we might be able to punish them with the Infuriate too. Keeps both cars on top. Uh -huh, they were missing a color. Maybe just a light splash. Alright. So now we need to draw more creatures. That's a creature. Probably just equip here. I suppose they can use a liar on whichever creature we put the wings onto, but then we can punish them with Infuriate if they don't pay enough. They're looking at the graveyard again. Another Omen of the Dead. I guess they can get back Blight Breath. Although they might not be able to play it this turn. The Wings definitely gives us inevitability, although it's not the best uh, against Entrancing Liar. Yeah, we'll just move to combat, see what happens. Only for two. So yeah, I could infuriate here. So yeah, pro tip, if you have Lyre and you don't have any use for your other mana, just pay additional mana for the X, just in case of a pump spell. Points at four. And now I can Mugus' favor while the Triton is pumped to kill Physician. That worked out. Omen getting back Blight Breath, which can kill one of my creatures, but then Liar can be activated. So they probably need something else. Nope, it goes for Blind Breath. I guess if they have a land, they can do both. So they might be scrying towards a land or something else. Keeps both. Alright, so the game's definitely not over yet. Remorse checks out my hands. Well, not sure what they'll take. Our hands pretty good. All right, so they're not that on board, but very close. I 
think they had to kill Soul Reaper because now I can just Mogus's favor and equip under that on board. But I guess they couldn't since it's only two devotion, so I guess they're just dead on board then. Alright, sweet. They pieced it together. So yeah, that key infuriates. My opponent, I guess, wanted to keep up mana so they could Omen of the Dead and then sacrifice it. Which is why they didn't pay more for the Lyre. But uh, they paid the price. Alright, 6-0. Oh. This draft has been going pretty swiftly. And we've got a bit of an awkward opening hand with three swamps. So no double rat for giants. But probably can mulligan. We've got a, a hero, a pump spell, a good creature. It's just that three swamps is a bit much. If swamp is a mountain, this hand would be decent. I'll try it. Got our double rat, so yeah, I mean, if we could keep a six card hand with double rats, I would have kept that for sure, so I guess I'm happy. Opponent on Esper. Hopefully no Ashiox or Dream Trawlers in my future. If we suspect a counter spell, I could also just play Chariot, which doesn't get countered by the Knight of Divine. Instead of playing the Giant into it. So against blue decks, it's also important to learn when it's a good time to play your non-creature enchantment spells. Of course, that's not always an option. Sometimes you just only have creatures and enchantments. But uh, yeah, we kind of just wasted our opponent's entire fourth turn there. We've got a couple options of how to deal with the Berserker. Infuriate is not great unless we attack with the Chariots. If we uh, infuriate the hero, they can still trade. So I think we just screw here. Hit for three. And have a giant in play. So that was kind of the best case. And uh, Ragehound can crew the chariots. Hopefully Blessing can deal with the next blocker they play. Ah, that's a pretty good one. And sadly this is an ability so it doesn't trigger the giants. And then play my land since next turn my removal is going to be more expensive, so I might need uh, extra mana. Omen get back Berserker. Sure, if they just step out for Berserker, I'm happy. Alright, so this costs 6. I can't play Ragehound to Crew Chariots, but... Uh, So looks good now thinking if there's a reason for me to crew the chariots. I guess it doesn't hurt. And that does it. Nice. Well, things worked out.
and a squeaky clean 7-0. And yeah, the Chariot, I have to admit, was pretty impressive in that deck. Now, it's not amazing in every deck, but here, where we had some combat tricks, where we had the Rage Hounds to synergize with it, I was very impressed with it, also letting us play around counter spells in the right turn. Pack one, pick one. Galia's okay, but it is two colors, so I think I'd rather take the blessing. Thassa's Intervention's not bad. The two uncommons are also quite good. And there's a final death. So very stacked pack. Is Intervention better than Final Death? I think it's close. It's definitely a very good card if you've got the right archetype. But not every blue deck necessarily is a counterspell deck. Some blue decks are just um, kind of your support color for a white enchantment deck, in which case you're not going to use the counterspell mode on intervention all that often, and it's more going to be a card draw spell. But that's nice about intervention being so flexible. In some decks, you're going to be able to use it as both a counterspell and a card draw spell. In other decks, it might just be a card draw spell late in the game, and that's still fine, especially if you have a lot of mana. So Intervention is quite solid, but I think it's still close with Final Death. But I would probably still take the single color cards over the multicolor cards, even though they're quite good too. All right, sweet. Want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.